to love yourself more. This was the exact phrase my therapist told me at just 12 years old after a series of anxiety attacks I had. I didn't even realize how depleted of self-love I really was until I thought back to my first day of fourth grade. I woke up early, ate breakfast, and put on my first day of school outfit, a matching lime green sweatsuit. And while I don't have the exact photo, these are some renditions of said sweatsuit over the years. This outfit eventually became what I deemed my invisible cloak. I know what you're thinking. Lime green isn't necessarily an invisible color, but give me a break. It was the 90s, okay? It was really in. <laughs> this outfit eventually symbolized all the things I grew to hate about myself. My developing chest, my belly rolls, and my skinny, disproportionate legs. Somehow, this sweatsuit made me feel hidden, and that's how I liked it. So the first day of school, I run outside to catch my bus, and as soon as it pulls up, I realize that it's jam-packed full of my classmates. This meant I was the last bus stop on the route. To most kids, this was the most exciting news of the century because it meant you got to sleep in longer than everyone else in school. To me, however, this was torture. It meant that every single day for an entire year, I would have to walk on that bus and walk in front of each and every single one of my classmates all eyes on me. So that first day of school, I ran onto the bus as fast as I could and found the first open seat available. As soon as I sat down, I felt relief. I felt hidden. I felt safe. And I was glad I was wearing that lime green sweatsuit because I thought maybe, just maybe, for the next 10 minutes, it could keep me hidden until I got to school. That evening, I begged my mom to take me to school the next day. I told her I felt too rushed getting to school in the morning. Thankfully, my mom agreed, and the next day, she took me to school 30 minutes early. That meant that I could get into the school, into my classroom, and into my seat without a single person seeing me. And that's how I like to be, invisible. Now, you may not have had a lime green sweatsuit. Let's actually hope to God that you never did. <laughs> okay. But maybe you had your own version. Maybe it was a sunglasses, a hat, or a baggy shirt. Maybe you never smiled with your teeth or always showed up early to avoid being seen. Regardless of the style or type, sometimes we hide behind this invisible cloak because we don't like certain parts of ourselves. So the moment my therapist said to me, you need to learn to love yourself more, this was truly the moment my journey to self-love began. I've been so inspired by the ideas and the concepts of loving yourself and accepting yourself that I've researched and written about it over the years. One article I wrote in particular got a lot of momentum and I was really excited about it. Almost immediately after posting it online, the comments started rolling in and they went something like this. Just what we need, more narcissists in the world. The problem with America is that too many people love themselves, ugh. Or this one, do not listen to her. She's just promoting obesity and disguising it with positivity and self-love. Or my favorite one, and this is how I'm envisioning them saying it. At Lindsay Smith HHC, how many calories are in self-love? Hashtag not a nutrient. I really wanted to be like, hashtag missing the point. <laughs> <laughs> and while I can laugh about this now, I assure you that at the time, I completely felt derailed. Here I was preaching the self-love gospel all these years, and in this moment, I questioned everything, and I thought to myself, is it narcissistic to love yourself? Wait, was I a narcissist? Was I just teaching other people how to be narcissists themselves? And was my therapist just full of shit this entire time? <laughs> there were so many questions I had. <laughs> And as much as I wanted to be sad and upset and find that lime green sweatsuit to hide behind, I instead decided to tackle this issue head on. So I went out and I interviewed and I researched therapists, doctors, and mental health professionals. And while most of my research, especially online, people would define narcissism as a, quote, excess of self-love. But I found this to be dangerously untrue. I found that we are in fact so far removed from self-love that we're actually confusing it with narcissism. 
And I get it. I get it. We live in a digital age, a day where over one million selfies are taken on a daily basis, okay? So one could say that we are self-absorbed and narcissistic. There's actually been several studies done between narcissism and selfies, and they have found a direct correlation between the two. <laughs> I'll let you think about that one for a minute. But even when you break down a selfie, you realize the true difference between self-love and narcissism. With a selfie, you seek the world's approval. But when it comes to self-love, the only person you have to please is yourself. Self-love, unlike narcissism, is not about vanity. Instead, it's about vitality. So what are the true differences between narcissism and self-love? Narcissists will literally work themselves to the bone, literally, <laughs> because they're connected to this external reward that they will receive. They care less about their own well-being and more about seeking the approval of others. Whereas people who truly love themselves and accept themselves are willing to take a break, relax, and recharge so that they can show up fully for a project. They care less about being liked and more about well-being. Narcissists will spend hours at the gym just to perfect their abs so that they can show them off in a perfectly constructed selfie. Whereas people who truly love themselves and accept themselves work out to be healthy. No selfie needed. Narcissists are willing to take everything for themselves and blame others. Whereas people who truly love themselves and accept themselves are willing to take criticism constructively and use it to better themselves, rather than to blame their shortcomings on others. So by confusing narcissism and self-love, we're not only robbing people the capacity to love themselves, but we're saying that if you go too far with this whole self-love thing, that you too will become a narcissist. But quite frankly, that's just not true. Because when you love yourself, you appreciate yourself. You know that you have flaws and imperfections, but you're willing to change to be a better person or accept the parts of you that you once hid from. Most narcissists never actually seek out the help they so desperately need. So today I want you to consider how you can incorporate the nutrient of self-love into your diet. First, you have to ask yourself the big question. What is your lime green sweatsuit? And what have you been using it to hide behind? Is it the same invisible cloak that you've been carrying since grade school? Or has it changed? What's it going to take for you to love yourself right now? And are you willing to? If you were lacking, for example, say, vitamin D, you could easily take a supplement for it. The ability to love ourselves is within us, but we need to understand what's been lacking so that we can truly nourish and cultivate it properly. Thinking back to when I was a kid in that lime green sweatsuit, the one thing I was working so hard to hide from was my body. But that was the one thing working so hard to keep me alive every single day. And let's face it, your body is an incredible machine. It's like a computer system designed and programmed specifically for you and only you. It breathes without reminders to do so. It beats a heartbeat to keep you alive. It heals even the deepest wounds. It grows your hair back after a bad haircut. It energizes you to run, play, and laugh. It feels deeply and intimately. It protects you from outside harm. It digests food to keep you sustained all day long, yes, it even digests that chocolate chip cookie that you just had for lunch. <laughs> and just like an essential nutrient, self-love should be taken daily. And while I can't promise you this will be easy, I can promise you that if you accept this nutrient of self-love into your life and allow it to nourish you daily, that over time you will not just experience the benefits, but you'll ultimately encourage others to remove their invisible cloak and nourish themselves with self-love. And remember, 
The next time you go to take a selfie, do it because you love yourself, not because you don't. <laughs>